I want to talk to you now about a quick introduction to AI for LinkedIn. Uh, first, um, I want to I start by saying uh, welcome to, to Joe uh, Applebaum, the founder and CEO of Ajax Union, uh, a B2B digital marketing agency in Brooklyn. Uh, he is uh, a business strategist, a LinkedIn expert, and a certified Google trainer uh, who, like me, has trained uh, more than 10,000 companies. He's also uh, the author of five books, uh, the founder of Evergreen Networking, and the creator of the uh, EVAI app to facilitate networking uh, on LinkedIn. You're going to learn a lot about Joe and his app. Um, and he's a member of the National Speakers Association and a phenomenal uh, speaker. I've seen him speak. Uh, we did a LinkedIn Live this week. So Joe, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm really excited to be here. And thank you for all of you in the comments. You're so engaged. I really love seeing the comments float up. And I see people are already sharing their LinkedIn URLs in the chat. So feel free to connect with each other. I'm excited about this information because a lot of people use LinkedIn, but not many people have the time to use it properly. And with AI, you're going to save a lot of time. So I'm really excited about this topic, Dan. Absolutely, and I'm excited to have you here. So let's let's take a few minutes and just talk through the context uh, of AI for LinkedIn. It, it's not as widely known as as we might think, and for those of us who are in the field, uh, I think we often forget to just kind of do a level setting of understanding. So first of all, Joe, LinkedIn is the world's largest professional social network, right? I just uh, searched on Google yesterday. I said, how many users are there on Facebook? And Facebook currently has 3 billion users. LinkedIn has yet to reach a billion users. They're at 930 million users. That's a lot of people. They're going to be hitting a billion very quickly because they're growing at a rate of three new members every second. LinkedIn is a fast-growing professional social network that has more millionaires than any other platform. So when I teach LinkedIn, I'm teaching people a platform that can generate revenue. 80% of B2B leads that come from social media come from LinkedIn. So if you are serious about getting leads, if you are serious about networking, LinkedIn is the platform where the people have the most money, there are the most professionals there, and you can also get the most organic attention right now because when you post something on Facebook, you might get 15 people to see it. But on LinkedIn, my average posts get over a thousand views, which and some uh, posts have gotten over a million views. So mm -hmm. LinkedIn is a very powerful platform. And, you know, it was started out as an independent coffee uh, company co-founded by Reid Hoffman, but it was acquired by Microsoft. And we, we have seen just at, over the last several years, uh, as Microsoft engineers kind of built their tender hooks into this platform, we have seen like daily updates and, 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 and upgrades in the technology. And um, BizHack actually has an entire course uh, pre-chat GPT about LinkedIn. And it was incredible. We would um, share our screen and it would look different from the day before. The The speed with which uh, the updates were happening uh, were very similar once Microsoft owned it to what you saw at Facebook. Uh, the difference though between Facebook and LinkedIn, and I think this is a really important distinction, is while Facebook made its North Star growth at the maximum speed at all costs, and we've seen those costs pretty vividly in terms of some of the negative outcomes of Facebook uh, growing too quickly and not having the right controls in place. LinkedIn has not grown as quickly with intention. And it really has tried to preserve itself as a better space for networking and conversation. Now, it can get a little spammy, right? And we all are getting unsolicited messages, uh, you know, from salespeople. But I can tell you, uh, you know, LinkedIn has not been attributed to coups. You know, LinkedIn uh, has generally been more ca cautious, more business-minded and more long-term focused and responsible, in my opinion, in terms of curating uh, a valuable network. That actually has consequences because if they think you're breaking their terms of service, they won't blink an eye and kicking you off. So Joe, talk a little bit about how this is a more Yes, it's almost a billion users, um, which is still one third the size of Facebook, but it's a perhaps a higher quality community uh, in terms of the experience of being in there every day. 
There are more millionaires on LinkedIn than any other platform. And the difference between, I would say, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter is, let's say, for example, I use Instagram all the time. You can find me at Joe Applebaum on Instagram. I'm curious to know who uses Instagram. Feel free to put your Instagram handle too in the chat so people can follow each other. But when you're on Instagram, you see somebody's handle. You don't see necessarily their name. Right. People put their handle. People put their Twitter handle. People on Facebook, they don't really share a lot of information. But on LinkedIn, people share their first name, their last name, their company name, where they work, where they worked before, where they went to school, who their mutual connections are, all their activity. There's a lot of transparency when it comes to using LinkedIn. And this is why Microsoft paid twenty six point two billion dollars to buy LinkedIn back in 2015, 2016. The reason they did that is because they knew that LinkedIn was different. LinkedIn is business. When you're on Facebook, you're there to have fun. You're there to meet your friends, your family, all the things related to the F. But on LinkedIn, it's all related to professional. It's all related to business. It's all related to networking and relationship building. So the context and the mindset of a professional and a user on LinkedIn, they're there to build relationships and they're more open for you to hit them up. When you slide into somebody's DM on Instagram, they think you want to date them. That's why it's called sliding into the DM. But on LinkedIn, if I go into your DM on LinkedIn, I don't want to date you. I want to buy your services or I want to offer you access to my network or I want to invite you to an event or I want to give you an opportunity. That's what LinkedIn's about. And people know that. Yeah, sure. You're going to get spam everywhere. I get tons of spam on Instagram. Tons of spam on email and tons of spam on LinkedIn. Now they're doing LinkedIn verification. You may have gotten a notification to verify your LinkedIn with the clear feature. If you go to linkedin.com slash verify, you can actually verify your LinkedIn account. But if you're using any tools, the first thing I tell everybody is back up your LinkedIn account. And LinkedIn has the ability for you to be able to pull all your data off LinkedIn and back it up. Yeah, and we'll talk about that in a sec. So just quickly to give you a little bit more additional context and a little bit of a guide of where to get started as you think about this, LinkedIn is the world's most important recruiting tool. Um, and a, a large, large part of its revenue is generated through its recruiting services. It competes with a whole set of folks uh, you know, uh, in the recruiting space. And that space has been really transformed by AI in the last years, you know, things based such as, um, sifting, using AI to sift through with stacks of resumes, um, using AI to generate job descriptions. And the Microsoft has chosen that its first implementations of AI, uh, uh, are primarily in the recruiting space. So a lot of what Joe is going to show you today, uh, for the marketing and sales leverages third-party tools like his own EVAI, uh, ChatGPT, et cetera, and then kind of almost like either integrates them or cuts and pastes them into uh, the, the LinkedIn environment. My prediction is that these tools will eventually become native to LinkedIn. In other words, LinkedIn will begin integrating uh, as it has already done for a lot of uh, recruiting functions, um, a lot of these composition and creative tools that, that Joe's going to share with us today. Um, what we're already seeing that uh, in uh, Microsoft 365 through Copilot and through Bing AI. And so you can kind of see what's coming when you go to Bing uh, AI and you search and you see the uh, AI generated content integrated in the search results, that kind of thing, uh, that kind of seamless integration is coming to LinkedIn, but it's not here yet. So for now, uh, there's a little bit of a two-step process in leveraging AI for marketing and sales. So, so Joe, talk about... Um, you know, the more you give, the more you get in terms of high quality responses that, you know, AI is trained on generic information from the internet. And in order for it to be useful, you need to give it information about you and your company. You see all the artificial intelligence tools that are out there, they don't necessarily know who you are. You don't put in personal, personal information into the AI. Now you can actually train ChatGPT with information about your business and it will know who you are every single time. 
But anytime you're opening up a new chat, whether it's Google Bard or Claude or ChatGPT or Perplexity or Pi.ai or any of the apps that you're using, you need to start training the app to tell it about you and your business, to tell it about your target market, to tell it about your customer, your ideal customer's pains, your ideal customer's goals. You have to tell it how you help people. You have to tell it about your hobbies, your experience, and even create a Q&A session that you can copy and paste into the AI with all the popular questions that people ask you about yourself and your business. That will help you be able to train the AI. And finally, telling the AI what your tone sounds like and what your goal is and what you're trying to accomplish will also help it be able to create even more personalized information. AI is really, really smart, but it's only as smart as the person that's using it. If the prompts that you're giving it are foolish, it's going to produce foolish results. And a lot of people have tried to use artificial intelligence haven't used it effectively because they haven't taken the biz hack courses, they haven't taken our courses, and they don't know how to be able to use the AI. And so they're not getting the benefit and they end up quitting. Instead of quitting, what I want you to do is I want you to learn how to leverage it in the proper way by customizing it and preparing this information in advance. Beautiful. Thank you. A um, couple of quick housekeeping items. Number one, um, love that you guys are sharing your. Uh, LinkedIn profiles in the chat. Uh, please continue doing that. Um, we're going to uh, collect all those LinkedIn and share them in the Monday recap email. So you guys have access to those uh, and you can connect with each other. You don't have to do it while you're on this call. So if you want to be a part of that, uh, please go ahead and put your LinkedIn in there. Second, um, uh, about two thirds of you have filled out this the poll. Uh, for those of you who haven't, I'm going to close it here in a few minutes. So please uh, let us know how you're using AI in your business. You should have a pop up with the poll. It'll take you just a second to answer. And we really love getting that data. Thanks uh, for doing that. All right.